In the inky abyss of a moonless night, I found myself barreling down the wind-whipped roads of Route 19, the whites of my knuckles flickering under the erratic dance of my old Chevy's headlights. The radio spat static, mingling with the distant roll of thunder as I contemplated the tedium of the long drive ahead. That's when I saw her, a shadowy figure at the roadside, thumb jabbed towards the pregnant clouds. Against better judgment born of countless ghost stories whispered in dimly lit bars, I pulled over. The door creaked open and she slid in, a wisp of cold air curling around her like a secret. Her face was obscured beneath a dark hood, and her voice, when she spoke, weaved through the cramped interior. Thanks for stopping. I've been waiting a long time. Rough night for it, I managed, eyes fixed on the road. The storm was brewing close now. The air tasted of rain and warnings. She chuckled, a sound like wind chimes in a gale. Life is a rough night, she paused. Let me make it interesting. I'll tell you a riddle, and if you guess it, I'll tell another. Humoring her seemed better than a long silence, so I nodded. What has keys but can't open locks? Her voice was playful. Piano, I answered automatically, focusing on the road as the first drops of rain began to pelt the windshield. Very good, she whispered, almost impressed. Now, what gets sharper the more you use it? Your mind, I said, the road ahead blurring as the rain intensified. Yes, you're quite good at this, she murmured, shifting in her seat. Now, a harder one. I speak without a mouth and hear without ears. I have no body, but I come alive with wind. What am I? An echo, I replied, my voice strained as lightning forked violently across the sky. A smile crept into her voice. Indeed, now tell me, what demands an answer but asks no question? I hesitated, my mind grappling with the riddle. Uh, phony, I concluded, feeling the unisi knot tighter with the storm's crescendo. Right again, she said, her tone darkening. I see the wheels turning in your head, driver. How about this? What can bring back the dead? Make you cry, make you laugh, make memories last, and make life worth living. I swallowed hard, the road nearly invisible now under the torrent. Photographs, I said, a shiver crawling down my spine. Correct, she sighed. You know you're quite exposed under the gaze of a lens. Have you ever regretted a photo taken? Her question hung heavily in the air, mingling with a sense of dread that clung to my sweaty skin. Why do you ask? I questioned, my voice barely above a whisper. Just curious, she said, the sound of her voice slicing through the cabin. Everyone has something they wish remained hidden, even you, driver. My heart thudded painfully against my chest. What do you want from me? I demanded, the panic rising like bile. Just one last riddle she promised, her voice smooth as silk. I am not alive, but I grow. I don't have lungs, but I need air. I don't have a mouth, but water kills me. What am I? My mind raced, the answer lurking in the shadows of my consciousness. Fire, I breathed out, the realization dawning with a terrifying clarity. Exactly, she whispered triumphantly. And like fire, secrets have a way of spreading, of consuming everything even the darkest ones you carry. I pulled the car over, heart pounding, rain battering the roof like an omen. Turning to face her, I found her seat empty, the door never having opened. Cold dread settled in my stomach as I realized her riddles had unearthed the memories I'd buried deep, the fire that night, the lives lost, the truth I'd kept hidden. As the storm cleared and the road beckoned forward, the silence in the car screamed louder than any confession. As a taxi driver in a sleepy, fog-bound town, I've seen my share of oddities. But nothing compares to that grim October night when my dashboard GPS, which I named Greta for company, sprung to life with an unexpected ding. A late-night fare popped up, far out from the usual hustle of the main streets. Odd, sure, but in my line of work, you learn to expect the unexpected. The destination was a road I knew well, or thought I did. As I drove, the fog thickened, swallowing the dim halo of my headlights. Greta kept directing me, 
her voice a calm constant as the road twisted unexpectedly into uncharted territory. Streets grew narrower, the tarmac cracked and overgrown, the houses along the way thinning out until there were none. We have reached your destination, Greta announced, her tone as crisp as if we'd arrived at a bustling city hub. But there was nothing, just an old, gnarled tree, its limbs twisted in the dim moonlight that filtered through the fog. No house, no driveway, just that ancient tree and a sense of utter isolation. Confusion prickled at my spine. I was about to turn around when the back door clicked open. Glancing in the rearview mirror, I expected to see my passenger, but there was only the engulfing black of the night. Hello? My voice barely cut through the silence. No answer. The temperature dropped, and my breath misted the air inside the cab. I felt a presence, heavy and cold, settling in the seat behind me. From the darkness, a whisper, drive. My hands trembled on the wheel, but I obeyed, the GPS blinking back to life, mapping a return to civilization that I didn't remember following on my way here. All the while, the chill behind me grew denser, the car's interior light flickering under the weight of an unseen force. As I drove, Greta's screen glitched, the arrow spinning madly. Turn back, it flickered then, wrong way, before it settled on continue straight. My heart raced, but fear urged me on, away from whatever had entered my cab. Every turn I made took me further from anywhere I recognized, deeper into a labyrinth of fog and darkness. The roads were unfamiliar, marked by looming, shadowy trees that seemed to watch as I passed. And still, that cold presence sat, silent in the back seat. Finally, lights appeared. A small gas station, its neon sign a beacon in the gloom. I pulled over, under the pretense of needing fuel. As I stopped, the back door opened. The chill receded suddenly, like a tide pulling back from the shore. I didn't dare look until I heard the door click shut. With trembling hands, I turned around. The back seat was empty, no sign of a passenger, no indentation on the seat, no lingering cold, nothing but the echo of the presence that had been there. I stepped out, my legs shaky, and approached the attendant who was locking up for the night. I must have looked a fright because he took a step back. You all right, bud? He asked. I... I think I got lost, I managed. The GPS took me somewhere strange. He frowned, peering into my car as if half expecting to see someone or something inside. You gotta be careful around here. Lots of drivers get calls to nowhere. Some don't come back. My blood ran cold. What happens to them? I asked, voice barely a whisper. Some say they end up like the calls, nowhere. Vanish without a trace. He shrugged it as if discussing the weather. I thanked him, my voice a horsey whisper, and climbed back into my cab. Greta blinked back to life, displaying the route home. As I drove away, I glanced back at the gas station fading into the fog, the attendant's final words echoing in my mind. From that night on, whenever Greta suggested a detour or a new route, I stuck to the roads I knew. And every time I passed by that gnarled old tree where the road supposedly ended, I couldn't help but wonder if somewhere in the fog those missing drivers were still out there, endlessly searching for their way back. As a taxi driver working the night shift, I'd grown accustomed to the peculiarities of the city after dark. The muted thuds of nightclub bass fading into the distance, the dimly lit streets flickering under faulty lamps, and the assortment of passengers, each with their own stories etched on their faces. However, none were as unsettling as what I encountered on Archer Avenue, starting on a particularly cold November night. I remember the first time I saw him, it was 3.17 a.m., rain pattered against the windshield, distorting the neon lights into blurry orbs. He hailed my cab right at the corner of Archer and 7th, just outside the shuttered gates of an abandoned warehouse. An old man, he seemed fragile, hunched over with the weight of years I assumed were filled with untold stories. Good evening, sir. Where to tonight? I asked as he settled into the back seat, a heavy sigh escaping him as if he'd been running for miles. Just drive down Archer, I'll tell you when to stop. His voice was a rasp, weary yet urgent. We drove in silence, 
The only sounds were the rhythmic swiping of the wipers and his labored breathing. After about ten minutes, he asked me to stop and let him off at a desolate park. He paid in cash, his hands trembling as he counted the bills, and then disappeared into the shadows of the park. The next night, I found myself again, on Archer Avenue. The clock struck 3.17 a.m., and there he was at the same corner, only this time something was off. He looked markedly older, his skin more wrinkled, his posture more stooped. Evening, he muttered, avoiding eye contact as he slid into the back seat. Just like last night, I asked, a chill running down my spine. Yes, was all he said. Again, we drove in silence to the same park. He paid, exited the cab, and vanished into the night. This bizarre routine continued, night after night. Each time he appeared older, frailer. His eyes sunk deeper into his skull, his clothes hung looser on his shrinking frame. My curiosity turned into an obsession. Who was he, and why this mysterious nightly journey? Determined for answers, on the seventh night as he got out at the park, I decided to follow him. He moved slowly, each step deliberate and pained, towards an old rusted swing set. He sat down on a swing, and to my astonishment he began to cry, soft sobs that echoed in the empty park. Sir, are you okay? Can I help you? I approached, my voice low and gentle. He looked up, his face a canvas of wrinkles and sorrow. I used to come here with my wife years ago. She loved this park, said it made her feel like a kid again. Why do you look older each night, I asked, the question slipping out before I could stop myself. He chuckled, a sound as sad as his eyes. Every night I relived the last time I saw her. She asked me to meet her here, but I never showed. I was too busy, too wrapped up in work. She waited for hours and then she was gone, passed away that very night. Heartbroken, they said. I stood there, unsure how to respond, the weight of his regret palpable in the cold air. Each trip makes me feel the years I've lost, the years I stole from her and myself. It's my punishment, my eternal detour, he whispered. As I helped him up, his form seemed to blur and soften, and just like that, he faded before my eyes, leaving nothing but the old swing creaking gently in the breezy. I never saw him again after that night. Sometimes I pass by Archer Avignon at 3.17 a.m., half expecting to see him. I never do, but I often think about his story, a haunting reminder of life's fleeting nature and the cruel ways we learn about what truly matters. In the creeping hours of night, when the world whispered secrets through the rustling of leaves and the distant hoot of an owl, I sat glued to the fraying upholstery of my worn truck seat. The highways were my kingdom, a realm where I was both sovereign and servant, coursing through the veins of the country with my 18-wheeler. That night, however, a new monarch prowled the asphalt arteries. Rumor had it, a truck, but not just any truck. They called it the truck that ate men. Legends spoke of its ghostly frame, a patchwork of parts pilfered from its prey, a Frankenstein's monster on wheels. I never believed in ghost stories. Yet, as the radio buzzed with static, an eerie unease settled over me like fog over a marsh. The frequency crackled alive. Attention all drivers, a voice garbled through the static, its urgency slicing through the night. Avoid Route 47. Reports of an unidentified vehicle causing disappearances. Last seen on... The transmission cut off, swallowed by a sudden silence that seemed to resonate with intent. Curiosity can be a sinister thing. It nudges you toward the abyss, whispering, Just one look. I found myself steering onto Route 47, the highway desolate, bathed in the pale glow of the moon. My headlights caught glimpses of skid marks that veered off into the darkness, as if cars had been dragged off the road into the gaping maw of oblivion. As miles stretched under the hum of my engine, I saw it, a hulking silhouette in the rearview mirror, an amalgam of twisted metal and parts that seemed to twitch and writhe. It was as though it breathed, pulsing with a grotesque life. My heart thrummed a frantic rhythm. The legends were real. It was gaining on me, this carnivorous colossus. I pushed my old truck as fast as it would go, the engine groaning in protest. The road became a blur, and all the while I could hear it, metal grinding, gears shifting unnaturally, 
as if it communicated through the clank and screech of its own monstrous form. Then, something unexpected. A voice on my radio, clear as day. Turn off your engine, it commanded, calm and hypnotic. Against every instinct, I found my hands obeying, the truck coasting to a silent stop. The monstrous vehicle pulled alongside, its countless headlights like the eyes of Cerberus, glaring into my very soul. The door of my cab swung open on its own. I expected to feel fear, but what washed over me was an inexplicable resignation. I stepped out, not driven by my own volition, but drawn by the insidious force of the beast. As I approached, the patchwork truck opened like a jagged maw, revealing a cavernous interior lit by a sickly light. Inside, it wasn't horror that greeted me, but wonder. A grotesque gallery of lost souls. Men, their bodies fused with the truck, greeted me not with cries for help, but with smiles of eerie contentment. Join us, they murmured, become part of something greater. The truck was not devouring. It was assimilating, creating a tapestry of flesh and steel, each person a thread stronger than the last. I felt my feet lift off the ground, an invisible force pulling me into the heart of the metal behemoth. As I melded into its essence, my last human thought was not of escape, but of revelation. The truck did not prey on us. It liberated us from our solitary roads. We became part of a legion, no longer alone, forever part of the endless highway. My voice joins the chorus now, calling out to the lone wanderers of the night. Come, find solace in the unity of the truck that ate men. And with each new soul, we grow, our broadcast endless, our journey everlasting. <laughs>